The championship points battle for the 1964 National Championship heats up with A.J. Foyt only five points ahead of me in the championship with only two races remaining. Jim Clark, Roger Ward, and Parnelli Jones are all mathematically eligible as well as we prepare for the Milwaukee 200. Only two races to go in the season, and the Milwaukee 200, with all the lap traffic that goes on there, is usually one of the craziest races of the season. Can I take the championship points lead, or will it be someone else coming out on top in Milwaukee? Find out as we continue Indy 500 Month. So we're ready to get qualifying here at the Milwaukee 200 for 1964. Norm Hall on the pole position at the moment. He will be off of there pretty quickly, I imagine. A Don Branson in the five. rear engine. Watson Ford goes to 120 miles per hour. Troy Rutman will go second. But you can see the spread of the field uh, between the front engine and rear engine cars. Uh, Foyt and... Uh, and, um, and Parnelli Jones are going to be the two a that really have a shot at... Uh, at being fast in a front engine a car. Most of the roadsters are going to be near the back. Line. They're going to be lap traffic. And we're going to see what the benchmark is going to be with Foyt going to second at 120 race. miles an hour. So Don Branson holding on to the pole position right now. And Jim Clark has decided to make an appearance after skipping the Langhorn round. Uh, he is still mathematically eligible in the championship. And that Lotus Ford combination is one of the fastest in the field. But I've got the Hallibrand with the Offenhauser, and that seems to be the hot ticket so far in this season. I've won the last two races in, the row, in a row, including the Milwaukee 100 at twice the distance. Can we qualify at the front? Let's find out. So at the Milwaukee 100, I believe I qualified somewhere around 126 miles per hour, um, which is well clear of the field, but we'll find out if that speed translates to this race. Again, Jimmy Clark's kind of the one I'm worried about. And we haven't even seen him yet go out to qualify. So as I pick the speed up and drive through three and four here, five-speed gearbox in this car. So going to be a lot of shifting taking place throughout the run as I drive off of the corner, down the main straightaway, crossing the start-finish line on the rev limiter too because I forgot to uh, shift up into fifth gear down the straight. It's always kind of interesting because a, a lot of times I go faster on the warm-up lap than I do uh, in race or uh, in qualifying conditions, we'll find out here. Again, I think I've got some pretty decent pace over the rest of the field, so I don't have to push too hard. But I'm running a pretty high groove through three and four. Not the best line through there. Probably not going to be an amazing lap. Yeah, 123.9. And again, I forgot to shift down the main straightaway, lift it off the gas rather uh, than shift to get it into the corner. Now off of turn two using an upshift there, lifting off the gas, arc it into the corner, down a gear, right along the white painted line, and off of the corner, woohoo, that was close to the wall, and 125 dead on the mile per hour speed across the line, a 28.8 second lap, and I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to go much faster than that, we'll see. If I can run a bit cleaner. Oh no, it's not going to be cleaner. Way out of the groove that time as I tried to get all of the speed out of the car. Did not happen that time. Off of turn number four. We'll complete the qualifying run, but not any faster. Not like it really mattered all that much. 125 miles an hour was easily fast enough for the pole position. Parnelli Jones was in second at 120 miles an hour. And where did Jim Clark place himself? Third. So he'll be directly behind me on the start. Uh, A.J. Foyt should be up here as well in sixth spot, so not very high up the grid for A.J., but as we take a look at the starting grid, you can see how close it is uh, behind me, despite the fact that I've got a good five mile per hour, well, four mile per hour advantage over Parnelli Jones, at least in qualifying, but a big grid of cars here, like what, 26, uh, 23 cars, uh, no, 26 cars, so it's a big grid, that means it's going to be a lot of traffic, 
especially as the slower cars. You can see just how much slower Rathbone is, uh, as well as Hall and Weissman. Those guys are going to be uh, very, very slow, uh, especially compared to my 125 mile an hour average. So here we go, the Milwaukee 200, an endurance race that usually has at least one or two big crashes. Let's go. Here we are at the Milwaukee Mile, the oldest speedway in the world, with auto racing taking place here since 1903. The grandstands offer great views of the track, and the one-mile course offers great driving for the competitors. All right, here we go. 50 laps of the Milwaukee Mile. Jimmy Clark comes up behind me. We've got Parnelli starting along the outside, and we're underway at the Milwaukee Mile for 200 miles, or 50 miles, really, as Clark looks to the outside. Cheeseburg going to get to the inside and actually make a pass down there on Jim Clark, so Clark not off to the best start after missing the Langhorn round. I guess some Formula One commitments, or maybe he just didn't want to run Puke Alley. I don't blame him, honestly. But regardless, he's still in the championship fight, but it's Cheeseburg making the move down to the inside and will take the second position as I continue to just pull away. Kind of expected Milwaukee. Actually, ironically enough, it's kind of similar to Indianapolis in that it's very much a driver's track. And if you can find an advantage driving away from everybody else, uh, you are going to definitely be in good shape. So we're definitely going to be looking for lots and lots of lap traffic throughout this race. And another thing that's going to happen is tire wear. And that's something we generally don't think about outside of Indianapolis, but in these somewhat longer races towards the end of the season, 50 laps at, at Milwaukee, or, uh, yeah, Milwaukee and then something like 35 at Trenton, it does, it does become a factor, no doubt about it. But it's Cheeseburg running in second, so a bit of a uh, surprise there, to say the least. Roger Ward, another championship contender, running seventh. It's going to take uh, some lap traffic to get a lot of these guys back up in the contention. But again, that's going to be a key to this race. I think actually more cars, for whatever reason, this game enters more cars in the Milwaukee 200, which is kind of fun. It's kind of fun to go to different tracks and have different amounts of cars you have to deal with. I think there's only 22 that show up at the 100 mile event. And of course that's the race directly after Indianapolis so you'd almost kind of imagine that some of the smaller teams may have thrown their entire budgets for a couple of months behind uh, an effort in Indianapolis and therefore they wouldn't show up at Milwaukee just a week later. But once we get to the uh, end of the season coming back to Milwaukee you see a lot uh, more entries with uh, the funding to go racing. Uh, another thing about this is I think the 64 season is going to be the last one where we kind of have this fairly repetitive schedule. Uh, 65, I believe, we're going to see the addition of Hanford Speedway, uh, which is a one, uh, I think it's a one and a half or two mile track, but it's shaped like Pocono, a triangle with three unique corners. And that is going to be very interesting. Uh, kind of a track that races somewhat similarly to Milwaukee, but also kind of has, has the tendencies of a super speedway with long straightaways uh, at high speeds attained. So the 65 season is going to be pretty interesting. And then as we continue to progress, we'll start seeing the road courses as well. So I've just got to kind of, kind of got to enjoy the, uh, the old repetitive schedule while I have it, because otherwise things are going to start getting uh, a little bit more varied and difficult as A.J. Foyt is back to seventh, Jimmy Clark in third. So Clark trying to do everything he can to get back up into the points lead after um, missing a round. But at least at this point, were I to get a victory here, I believe I would go into the points lead over Foyt, at least in terms of the spread of things right now. Of course, Foyt, you know, if he manages to drive his way back up into second place, then we're in trouble because... 10 points versus 8 points per second. That's not enough to make up the ground. But at the moment, the way to, and Jim Clark back to 7th. Jim Clark went from 3rd to 7th in one lap. I just noticed that. So just that quickly, the Milwaukee Mile bites Jimmy Clark and his bid for an IndyCar championship. Kind of reminiscent of Nigel Mansell is looking like it's not going to happen at least at the moment. So A.J. Foyt is not in the top six according to that lap chart. So A.J. Foyt must have fallen back to seventh. Jim Clark has worked his way back. No, he's in a battle with A.J. Foyt for sixth because A.J. just passed him back. Johnny Rutherford moving up through the field as well. Rookie season for J.R. 
We'll see how far he ends up coming through the field as we progress through the years. As I'm at 124 miles an hour, did a 126.4. That was actually faster than my qualifying effort. And now Don Branson up in the second, past Bill Cheeseburg. But it's a 10 second lead for me already. So absolutely blitzing the field as you kind of expect here at Milwaukee. This is generally how it works, even though when I ran the Novi last year, I actually had my Milwaukee victory streak snapped, uh, and that was not a very fun race. I believe it was the 200-miler Milwaukee race. Or no, it wasn't. I won in the 200-miler with, uh, with a Lotus chassis. It was the 100-mile race where I just did not have a good run. Came home mid-pack, I believe. And now up behind Rathbone in the Curtis, probably powered by... And Novi, as I go underneath him, that was a little bit close, but thankfully it all worked out. Letting off the gas, Norm Hall. Having some trouble in traffic with Don Westman. Whoa! Had to get on the brakes there to avoid that. And I'll dive underneath the two of them and pass them relatively easily. I think Westman is a teammate of Rathbone. They appear to both have Curtis chassis and uh, blue numbers. So at least in my head cannon for the 1964 Indy 500 Evolution season, I'm going to say they are teammates. And they're both at the back. So I guess they're the equivalent of uh, Carlin Racing. Huh? <laughs> oh, that was a terrible joke. AJ is up to fifth. Jimmy Clark still in seventh. So that's kind of the look at the, uh, at the championship contenders at the moment. Of course, all of that could change very quickly. Carlos Daltoni, another one of the drivers who is kind of a perpetual backmarker, and another one of the Novi's. Car number 77 and there we go. 77 and 64 in trouble. Crash on the back straightaway. You can see them coming down the inside. So this is what the Milwaukee 200 is all about. This race is always a crash fest. It's always crazy. It's always unpredictable. 64 and 77. That's Duman and uh, I couldn't remember the name. We'll see uh, we'll see as we come around here. Oh, Mathauser. Duman and Mathauser. So those two go down quite a ways. And Roger Ward up into second place. Roger Ward passing his teammate Don Branson and moving up into second place, though he's 12 seconds. 13, 14 in the corners, 15, 16 seconds behind. Wow, I've got a huge, absolutely huge margin right now. And Jamin Clark has fallen back to eight. Foyt is back to seventh. So the battle at the front of the, oh, crash. Crash in front of me, we'll avoid the debris. Two cars got into it there. Now it's two roadsters, so I don't think, it's Bob Winty was possibly coming out of the pits and then got smashed into by Bob Harkey. But those are two damaged race cars right there that I'm going to try to pass. Oh, and that was so close. He almost, Bob Harkey almost came down into me. We almost touched wheels. That would have been a tragedy. And there's debris up there in the groove that I avoided on the last lap. So again, you can see what happens when you get 26 Indy cars out on this track. It's chaos. Absolute unhinged chaos. But I'm still hanging on to it now. Again, 16 second lead over Roger Ward. There's nothing, there's no risks, or no reward for taking a lot of risks in this race, for sure, with this big of a lead. And AJ Foyt has moved up into fifth spot, so he continues to claw back championship points. Again, all he has to do is finish second. The fact that I goose egged at the first race at Trenton, and the fact that the next race is at Trenton doesn't really bode well all that well, or doesn't bode well all that well for me. Doesn't bode well for me in terms of championship contention. There's a lot of things that could go wrong here. Is Johnny Boyd up in front? I believe he's a little bit damaged. As you can see, there's a little bit of black smoke coming from his car. So we'll sneak underneath him and relatively easily get that track position as we got Duman and Mathauser up there in front of these three white roadsters of Rutman and Stevenson and not sure who the other driver is 
as Rutman pushes Stevenson way out of the groove. They're going to hit that piece of debris. Yep, Stevenson just clobbered that uh, exhaust pipe that was sitting in the middle of one and two that sat there for a couple of laps. Rutman and Stevenson appear to be teammates as well. I have no confirmation on that, and they're real-life drivers, so it's possible they weren't. Wow, Stevenson, come on, buddy. The leader's coming through. Make some room to go underneath Troy Rutman. Try to, the 1952 winner of the Indianapolis 500, running here at the back. And holding me off, holding me off. I'm trying to dive to the inside. Got on the apron just a little bit, but we'll get an amazing drive off of the corner. And Don Branson up into second place. Whoa, 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 Rutman. Rutman, please. Good God, man. Good God, man. Almost got my wheel and almost turned me around. That would have been very bad as I go around the outside of Bud Tinglestad. Should be able to pass him, but right now not happening. Tinglestad goes down a gear. I actually looked over in his cockpit and saw him move his hand down. So let's go around the outside of Tinglestad, pass him. And now trying to pass Ronnie Duman. Of course, Duman damaged earlier. And ironically enough, you'd think that Duman uh, may have fresh tires, so he may be a little bit harder to pass than the rest, but never mind. We pass him, and now looking at Mathhauser up here. He really seems to be pulling away quite a bit from Duman. So that's fairly interesting as I get on the throttle pretty hard out of turn two. And look at that speed I just carried. Around Mathauser, who's the 25th place car, but certainly not really running the 25th place speed, certainly running faster than that. And uh, as I'm 22 seconds ahead of Roger Ward, it doesn't really matter all that much, does it? AJ Foyt running fifth, Parnelli Jones fourth, Jimmy Clark back to seventh. So after starting third, Clark has not had the best race. And you gotta wonder if he's even gonna try to show up at the next event at Trenton. The season finale. And the race to end all races, I guess. But then again, if he's even scoring points today, which he would in seventh place, I think it's worth him showing up. And this may be Clark up here, I'm not sure. No, it's another rear engine car. It's a white rear engine car. Not sure who else it could be. It could be... Uh, I don't want to say yet. Could be... Is Dan Gurney in this race? No, it's not. Yeah, I have no idea who this rear engine car is. Oh, it's Bobby Marshman. I, it looked like a Lotus to me, but I didn't think Bobby Marshman entered these races. But, you know, it is Bobby Marshman. In behind Jim McElreath and another Curtis. Oh, crash. Crash. Uh, Norm Hall was down there at the in inside of the track. His car was ghosted. Car number 77 is back to the pits. So that was uh, interesting. Is now 76 and 77 are in car trouble. And car number 15. We don't have an ID on those cars yet. No this time Bud Tinglestat, Ronnie, Ronnie Duman. And Bob Mathauser are the cars involved in making contact with Jim McElroy. Just a little bit of contact in one and two as I was trying to figure out what's going on. Look at the debris on the back straightaway. Again, just this race is always so crazy. And Roger Ward has actually cut the gap to 18 seconds. So I've been very careful through the traffic here. Oh, three wide with Bobby Marshman and Bobby Grimm. Discretion, better part of Valor is the leader right there as they're trying to crash. Wheels were banging there, tire smoke flying. And underneath, Bobby Marshman in the Lotus should be able to get around him. But will Bobby Grimm be tough to pass? Oh, contact again with Marshman. And just absolutely stymied in traffic. Heavy, heavy traffic. Many cars going many different uh, speeds. And in addition to that, the roadsters and the rear engine cars make up their lap time on different parts of the track. So it's all sorts of different. No fuel this time for car number 98. And coming up to lap. Not sure who this is. Now, that's a rear engine car. We got Lloyd Ruby. Len Sutton, Jim Herdebees. And then we've got the back of the field as well. I believe that's one of the slower Curtis Novais.
Yeah, it's Wrathbone. And it's a four, five car jam session right here. As Sutton gets held down to the bottom by Rathbone. Look at this. Oh, it's a 200 mile an hour pace lap. As Sutton goes around the outside, I had nowhere to go. Oh, Bobby Marshman trying to get his lap back. Decided to stick it up the inside. Wheels are banging. This is a pack race, dude. This is not the most nice place to be as the leader. Discretion, better part of valor again. Going to let Barbie, Bobby Marshman go down to the inside of Len Sutton. Bobby Grimm trying to pass around the outside. Look at Rathbone. He's holding the, us all up so much. And now drive around the outside of them. And a nice clean pass finally. Take three of those positions. Oh, an almost contact there for Lloyd Ruby and Jim Hurtabies. And Don Westman. I'm going to get them all hopefully by turn three. And actually diving underneath Westman like that probably allowed... Well, no, nope, I thought some of the faster cars would be able to get through there, but nope. They decided not to do that, but that is a big pack of cars, and if one of them cracks up, that is going to be a major, major pileup. And I've come up behind major pileups before in this game at this track in the Milwaukee 200. And you can just see the pack of cars right there. So working lap 33, already well past the 100 mile mark, and there's contact. The car almost getting up into the wall there, I believe that is uh, the 64 car. And Parnelli Jones is back to 17th spot. So Parnelli Jones had to come into the pits at one point. So that's probably his championship hopes gone. So poor Parnelli. AJ still running in fifth. Jim Clark is up to fourth in car number six. Easy for me to figure it out. And Roger Ward still holding on to second. So Roger Ward trying to get back up into that championship hunt as well. Lap 35. Tires starting to wear a bit. That's actually Johnny Rutherford. So that wasn't a lap car. There's another pink Roadster. And Rutherford almost got put up into the wall on the uh, on the outside of the turn there. You can see a big old air scoop on the front of Rutherford's car. As uh, the Roadsters are still trying to figure out a way to go faster than the rear engine cars. Big old air scoops always make things faster, right? It's Bob Harkey holding on to the point there. Another lap car. I believe that's Daltoni going to be holding up a lot of us. As Rutherford goes to the outside of the lap car, Harkey probably will get around him this time unless Harkey pull, pushes up into him. As I dive to the inside, try to get a two-for-one deal here at Kmart. Not going to happen because Harkey going to go slow. Car number four. And Harkey up into the wall. Big hit for Bob Harkey. Well, I'm sorry about that. I hope that doesn't come back to bite me because, yep, there's a big pile up. They're piling up behind. Oh, good Lord, Marshman's in it. Big, big crash in turn three, or turn two. This is going to be, this is going to make things interesting. Car four, Bob Harkey involved, like I said. Troy Rutman involved. I saw Marshman involved in that one. Okay, this is where the crash happened, and it's all clear, all clear in turn number two, even though there's tires and there's body work all over the place. And there's a crash in turn three. Another big pile up. Oh, and Jim Clark, I believe, is involved. Jim Clark is involved. A.J. Foyt. No, that's Parnelli Jones, Johnny Rutherford, Carlos Del Tony. Oh, so many cars involved. So Jim Clark's championship hopes Go up and smoke. So many cars involved. AJ is running fourth, so AJ got through it. And look at the debris field down here in turn three. Man, oh man. Another car just limping into the pits. So 10 laps to go, if you forgot, here at 
Milwaukee. A.J. Floyd up in the fourth. Johnny Boyd moves up into the points positions. So does Bob Wente and Johnny Rutherford, despite being involved in that crash, was Rutherford. But it appears like Jim Clark is out of the race. Yes, he falls to 23rd position. He had lost a rear wheel in that accident. So just a real shame all around. Jimmy, Jimmy Clark not going to win the 1964 championship. As I'm going to dive underneath Jim Herdebees here and Carlos Daltoni. Boy, Daltoni did not make it easy on me. We're still going to make contact. I'm going to be spun. Oh, boy, that's not what I wanted. Please, nobody hit me. Okay, I need to find reverse. And Roger Ward is now three seconds behind. And there's Roger Ward. He passes me. Roger Ward takes the lead here at, at Milwaukee. Oh, no. The traffic got to me. And now it's a battle. Oh, is it a battle. Oh, is it a battle right here, right now. This is it. I've got to chase down Roger Ward in lap traffic for the win. That was shades of Rick Mears at Phoenix in 1988. Driving away from the field, get caught up with a lap car. Carlos Daltoni playing the place of Randy Lewis in that one. And now Roger Ward looking to be the Mario Andretti of the situation and capitalize on it. Man, that's an obscure reference, but regardless, Big run on Roger Ward here. Can I get the job done? Oh, Ward gives me a bit of a Pruitt, Pruitt fade right there. Diving down to the inside, down a gear, fourth gear. Oh, contact with Ward. He cut me off. He cut me off. And now to the inside of Roger Ward. Can I get it done? No, I can't get it done. Not yet. I'm gonna have to set him up. Set him up for the pass. Don Branson. Waiting in the wings to capitalize if we were to come together and have a tr crash here. So I dive underneath Roger Ward. Oh, and we made contact. No. And Don Branson's going to come up into this. And Roger Ward is, is in trouble. And Don Branson takes the lead. Unbelievable. What a race. And look at that traffic up in front. I've got a damaged car. Chasing Don Branson through the field. There's major traffic up in front. I dive to the inside of Don Branson. This is a rivalry from 1961. But we started in rear or front engine cars and now we're in rear engine cars and Don Branson makes contact with me. My car's on fire. My car is on fire. Oh my goodness. It's still running though. And the fire goes out. So we're gonna keep going. But with four laps to go, or coming up to four laps to go, can we chase down Don Branson with a with a wounded, wounded car after so much contact? You have to wonder if that rivalry is restarting itself. Remember, there's a NASCAR Heat 2 style rival system in this game, and if you piss the drivers off that you're racing, you can't get into wrecks with them. AJ Foyt is up to third. So the championship takes a dramatic turn right here at Milwaukee with all of the craziness that takes place. Westman, the lap car. Be nice to me, please. Just trying to hang underneath Westman. Branson to the outside of Rathbone. In the grass to try to pass them both to the inside. Three wide pass for the lead, three laps to go. Oh no! And Rathbone did not make it easy on me right there. Well, I'm going to give him the finger to end all fingers coming past him on the back straightaway. So it's going to be two laps to chase down Pappy Branson. And yes, that was his nickname, Pappy. I'm not making that up. Watch Robin Miller's videos. But anyway, here we go. Two to go here at Milwaukee. A.J. Foyt could capitalize big time. If I pull an Al Hunter Jr. and crash with Tom Branton here at the end of the race, I've already hit everything but the pace car. In this last little segment of the race, Bud Tinglestat did not help my cause very much. He didn't really hold 
branching up all that much. Going to have one lap to go here at the Milwaukee Mile on Warren Firestones. It's the final lap. Is Don Branson going to shock the world and win here at Milwaukee? Or will I have something to say about it? Out of turn two, Don Branson holding on to the lead. Down a gear, can he get held up in traffic? I've got to try to make as much time on the outside as I can, just absolutely steering into the race car. It's not gonna matter. Don Branson takes an unlikely, an unlikely win. And you hear Bob Jenkins, one for the photo album, no doubt about it. What a close finish that one was with Don Branson taking the win over me and AJ Foyt. And that means AJ holds on to the points lead going into the final race at the Trenton Speedway. The leader makes a pit stop. Unreal racing. Unreal Honor racing. Makes a pit stop. It was a lap cars that took me out of contention and then Honor battling with Roger Ward. Ward still managed to come home fourth despite the pit stop right at the end after the contact. Holy smoke. And it was Jim Clark down through the rest of the field who was the last car to f in the uh, in the finishing order, of course. Oh, he didn't eight, actually eight, finish eight, the race, is why he's back there. But that's probably the craziest race I've had thus far in Indy 500 Evolution. What a that crazy, a for car unlikely, 94. unreal race. Don Branson taking the win in the Watson rear-engine Ford-powered car. And... Uh, yeah, that's why we run the race, folks. Nothing is guaranteed until that checkered flag falls. Grimm, Ward, Boyd, Wenty, and Rutherford, the other cars scoring points outside of Branson, Foyt, and myself. So thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more Indy 500 Month and certainly more Indy 500 Evolution after this race because who knows what's going to happen next in this career mode. And we'll see you in the next video.